As you can see, we're back from our trip up to East Riding in Yorkshire. Um, it was a nice trip up there. Of course, we booked it in advance, and the um, when we booked it, the weather looked good. It all looked good. But by the time we come to actually do the trip, the weather, of course, had changed. We had a brilliant um, journey up. Sunshine all the way, very warm, well into the evening, had the windows open, uh, so it was <coughs> very pleasant. But, a big but, and the next day of course we had the rain and uh, it went a bit downhill from there. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, please have a look at the video. It's uh, puffins, gannets, guillemots and so on up on the east coast of Yorkshire, Benton Cliffs, well Benton Cliffs was part of it. Okay, now getting back to why I'm making this video, it's basically a short video on, um, it's just over a year now that I have had my OM1 um, and I'm absolutely chuffed to bits with it over a year on. And Back then, the OM1 was voted the best wildlife camera, uh, which I think it was, but to some extent it still is. But uh, anyway, let's have a look and see why that would be. Um, I mean, they've brought out the Mark II now, which is even better um, in some respects. But is it good enough to change or spend that amount of money? I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, um, I can't justify it. I, I'm still trying to get the best out of this camera. And I think you've got to be a bloody good photographer to get the best out of this camera, let alone the Mark II. But of course, as the old saying goes, a good camera is always going to be a good camera, it doesn't matter how old it is. If it was a good camera when it was brought out, it's, it doesn't mean to say it's not a good camera now. It was a good camera in its day, and uh, you can't deny that. Anyway, I'm just a run-of-the-mill photographer, um, and I'm just going to give my impressions of what the camera has done for me, my genre is uh, mainly still photography rather than video photography so I'm not so much into the video side of things. And the OM1 has still got a 20 megapixel uh, sensor but it has been a newly developed uh, sensor with a stacked chip design with quad pixel Bayer pattern, no low pass filter, and it gives uh, very good results. Now, when I bought this, the G9 Mark II wasn't out, and that came out shortly after I bought this. Now, did I jump too soon from Panasonic Lumix and go for the OM? Well, I don't think I did. I really don't think I did. Um, the G9 has a 25 megapixel, so I'd probably like a few more megapixels, but that's not the main thing. And the G9 sensor is the same as the one that's in the GH6. And they say the hardware, Panasonic say the hardware and software has been tweaked. Um, that's hard to prove one way or the other. And then for a, as a game, as I say, for a wildlife photographer, you've got to look at practical things like the main thing for me was the autofocus. Now the G9 Mark II has 779 AF points phase detection, which is good news. It's the first time that a micro four thirds 
uh, Panasonic camera has phase detection, but it still uses contrast detection on 315 points and switches to phase detection in continuous mode. So in still mode, it goes down to 315 points. But when you're in continuous mode, it goes up into using phase detection. <coughs> yeah, I don't know. Leaves it a bit. Now if you compare that to the OM-1, and this is the original OM-1, not the Mark II, and we're comparing it to the G9 Mark II, which came out after this. The OM-1 has got uh, 1,053 cross-type points, focus points, plus the phase, de phase detection, uh, which covers the whole sensor. It's got quad-pixel sensor design, which means each pixel com uh, comprises of four photodiodes, that read independently and the camera can analyze in four directions plus using contrast detection as well with the same number of points now that's if you weigh that up to the Panasonic G92 uh, there's no comparison there's no comparison this is an older camera but it, uh, it out uh, specs if you like the uh, G9 and for those reasons which is why I chose this and the other thing is um, when I first got this camera I was still using the Lumix lens 100-400 to which was a good lens um, but it wasn't, a, it wasn't a prime lens it was just a uh, a good run-of-the-mill uh, zoom lens and it had the, well, an aperture of uh, 6.3 so you couldn't get past that um, and most of the time you're at the most longest focal length if you're doing wildlife most of the time and then of course when I started looking at uh, the uh, Olympus OM system lenses I just think they are so much better um, they are I mean the one that I've got now is the f4 300 millimeter prime so it's not a zoom it's a prime lens but it shoots at f4 so it's a fast lens and again, that's what you need for wildlife. When you compare it to other pro zoom lenses, to get down to f4, you're talking about a lot, a lot of money. And size as well. Compare the size of this to a full frame or to any of the other um, zoom lenses for micro four thirds that have got the range that this has I mean 300 millimeter full frame equivalent means it's 600 millimeters I've got a 1.4 teleconverter on there which give, brings me up to 420 millimeters which is a pretty good reach and again in full frame that's 840 millimeters 840 millimeters that uh, is getting to be pretty damn good. One of the other things that uh, this has uh, also you've got a two times um, digital teleconverter built into the camera. Um, using that can work pretty well, and it I use it a lot for framing up on a subject that's a long distance away because that brings that subject right into you you can really see what you're what you're taking and uh, what the uh, contrast is around the subject etc so the exposure I should say um, but one thing I was told early on and this was by this was by a couple of 
professional um, photographers, and that was that uh, the two times uh, digital converter doesn't work on video. And as I'm not really that into video, I accepted it, didn't look any further, um, which was a mistake because it does work. And this came apparent from watching a video by the man from Vienna, a well-known photographer. And if there's anything you want to know about OM cameras, do go and have a look at his channel. I'll put it. Well, as I was saying, Thomas Eisel, the man from Vienna, is the man to see his channel you get more information on OM cameras and systems and on general photography in fact um, very good chat <clears throat> the other thing I was going to talk about was uh, low light I don't think I mentioned that um, the OM1 has low light capability of minus 8 EV which is pretty good and that's at 1.2 um, F 1.2 ISO 100 um, which equals out to minus 6 um, EV at F2 the G9 which is, say is a new camera um, has a sensitivity, a sensitivity of minus Four at f2 at 100 uh, an ISO 100 so the own one doesn't do too bad I think you can agree there the other thing I was going to mention um, before I go was the Manif photo um, quick release system the uh, 323 quick release which I now swear by or swear at um, on my GX8 here, on the bottom of the camera, you will see there is a quick release plate, and this goes straight onto my tripod, or it can go straight onto my monopod, which has the same quick release mechanism camera just drops into there and as I say this has the tilt head now I've gone for a tilt head rather than a ball head some people say well why not put a ball head on there well ball head to control the camera flops all over the place you slacken it off to have that control to be able to swivel but the camera is likely to go in all directions with a tilt head you know where you are it's a lot easier to control believe me so that's the two things that I would recommend and as you can tell I'm rather enthusiastic about the OM systems cameras and lenses <coughs> and I'm not supported by in any shape or form by OM which I was I haven't got the amount of uh, subscribers as yet to be able to do, have anything like that but hopefully maybe one day if I don't die before out of old age I don't know um, but we're, we are slowly getting there oh, the other thing is I would recommend um, MPB, the um, second hand uh, company that buys and sells your cameras and lenses and so forth. And I will put a link up here, well not a link, to their website. Anyway, it'll be down in the description. Um, there, I found them to be a very good and very trustworthy company <coughs> and of course the other major retailers do the same sort of thing 
And I thing is, I've had good and bad success with them. They, they've been extremely good. Okay, I think that's it. I'm rambled on enough. Hopefully, see you next time. Hope, let's hope the weather is, well, somewhat better than what it has been. It's been di diabolical. And we're now midway to coming towards the end of July, which is ridiculous. wonder where the summer's gone. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Bye for now. Thanks for watching. And could you please give us a thumbs up? That would be good. And maybe subscribe as well. Most Much appreciated. And hopefully we will see you next time. If you subscribe, you will get notification of when the next video comes out. So many thanks for that and bye for now.